o'clock of a Saturday night, and all's well. <laughs> There she is. Over there, Albert. That doorway. I watched her earlier. Cold, aren't you, lad? Not feeling too well. No way to stay tonight. No, no. Okay. Oh, my dear. Why don't you come with me? I know someone looking for attractive girls like you. I noticed you earlier, before the rain. Such a pretty dress. Albert? Come in. Green silk, I thought. French, I dare say. Oh, look all in. What's your name? Oh, Belle. Pretty name. Get you some hot food. That's the answer. Proper food. Help me, Albert. It's all right, dear. Come on, you're safe with us. Let's get you into the carriage. She is all right, Ned. Have you locked the door? Yes. Come on. Hey, let's see. Not so rough. I'll help you, Pat. No. Where'd you find her? Never you mind, Jack. Just be grateful she did. Please, no. Where? No, don't worry. It'll be all right. I'll see nobody hurts you. And nobody will, I mean it, Jack. All right, Pat. Let me help you. Just undo this. There. God, but she's pretty. The Bobby. She's no more than a child. Very pretty. Take your pleasure, gentlemen. Oh, the Bobby. Your lordship. But no harm. Couldn't you just love her, Nat? Couldn't you? <laughs> London Particulars by John Peacock With Todd Carty as Pip Shepherd and Charles Simpson as Thomas Tedman Play for The Kittenhauser Love. Don't talk to me about love. Could be your wedding bells we're hearing before the year's out, Tom. Yes, I, 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 I suppose it could. Haven't you asked her yet? Uh, not, not, not properly. Blimey. Not officially. You've been saying you will for months. I, I, I know she'll say yes, but I still have to ask her for, for... Father? Yes. How long have you known her? Since we were 12. And have you courted nobody else? One or, one or two. Florence doesn't know about them, of course. <laughs> Dolly Jenks would have you down as a virgin. <laughs> well, uh, nearest makes no d- 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 difference. D- yes. Well, what do you think about Pip? Florence? Y- yes, yes. Funny sort of question. Why ask me? Well, you've been m- married. So? I w- always thought you were one for the ladies. Uh, understood them, you know. B- b- been in love. Knew what love was like. Well, yes, I've been in love. Did your... Wife? Mary, of course, and maybe one other. Susanna? Susanna and me's just good playmates. No, not Susanna. Catherine? Maybe, yes, maybe. Mm. How, how, how do you know, for sure? You don't. Is it fancying, or is it love? Exactly. I'm seeing Dolly tonight. She'd know. About the fancying, anyway. Because once you've jigged, if it's only fancying, it don't last. But if it's love... Still struggling. Can't tell you how hard. But glad to have someone here to help pay the bills. So how are we getting on with Esme? All right. Nice looking girl. Polite and all. More than could be said for a lot who've stayed here. Where is she? Out. I see. No, you don't. You see nothing at all. Dolly, if you put that girl into business, I'll have you arrested so fast you won't know what's happening to you. You wouldn't do that to Dolly. And what for? What am I doing wrong? Am I doing anything wrong? She does what she wants. I would. What have a chance a girl have anyway? Tell you what, if I was to teach her all I know, she could make something of herself, could Esme. 
as rich pickings waiting for her pet. I could see her with some wealthy gent set up in St James's or the A market. Married even. Dolly. Country house. She'd thank me for it. But Dolly... What do you think she'd do if I turned me back on her, eh? Sent her up in with no help. She'd be jigging off in a doorway with the first man who offered her half a crown. In a few years' time, she'd have umpteen brats and the pox, like as not. And then end up in some shitty slum like this for the rest of her days. Oh, oh no, pet. I see my girls don't end up in folly ditch. Esme is only 17. Esme is... Esme a... is in a pickle. And never mind bloody Esme, how does Dolly make a living? The only way Dolly knows how. She does what she does because it's what she does best. And I does it best because I've been there. I can keep these girls above the gutter. No girl in need has ever been turned away from here. Doors always open. Yes, yeah, all right, Dolly. What's trouble when you come here? Esby's are in a room, that's all. Ethel's room. And she pays her rent. Whatever she does when she goes out is her own business. I lend her a few dresses, I gives her advice. See, she goes out looking nice. Treat her as if she was my own daughter, I do. And introduce her to a few gentlemen friends? She picks her own friends. Does she? What do you want, anyway? Or have you just come on the nosy? You said I could take Michael Toby's letters for Catherine. I've forgotten the last time I was here. I don't know where they are now. You'll have to come back. Oh, Dolly, don't be difficult. Old pals, aren't we? Oh, when it suits. Got a bottle of summer short for you. That's how much I think here. Well, you apologise. I'm sorry. Is that it? I'm very sorry, Dolly. Well, I think they're in that cupboard. And you can put the bottle in there at the same time. You're not having a drop? Can't. I have to be off pet. Oh? I meet him with a gentleman friend. What, you, Dolly? Yes, me. No time to dawdle. I thought you were looking a bit togged up. Thought it was for you, did you? Isn't it? Oh, takes a bigger spoon than yours to stir my porridge. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly's on the move, pet. So, to get down to business, Mr Etherington, I understand you wants to speak to me about my Esme. Yeah. Lovely girl. Indeed. With such a lovely head of air. Just one of her many attributes, eh, Mrs Jacks? There's many a man ruined himself over a sight of red hair. <laughs> Will you take tea? Oh, much obliged. Milk and sugar? Uh, as it comes, nothing added. There. Thank you. Please, do. In every direction, I dare say. I hope she was satisfactory. Oh, yes, very. Virgin, of course. Yes, well... Well, nearest makes no difference. <laughs> so, Mrs Jenks, perhaps you could tell me a little more about Esme before I put my proposition to you. Anything to oblige. Does she have any relatives here that you know of? No, she's on her own, set for me. And how did you come upon her? An acquaintance. Name of Mary. Lives in my street, number 43. Same interest in human nature as myself. Only she don't deal with girls. Oh, Nancy's, eh? And such like. So, she passed Esme on to me, and, well, these four weeks, she's come like a daughter. Hmm. Do you have any other girls, Mrs Jenks? Oh, dear me, no, pet. No, I like to be exclusive. I like to think that by the time I've finished with her, any girl of mine can go out into the world and make a life for herself. That's not to say I couldn't find more. I ask my hand in many pies. And I would like to take Esme completely off your hand for 100 guineas. Yes, but it's only every now and then I puts my hand in a pie and pulls out a plum like Esme, 150. 125. 125. There'll be a carriage in St James's Park tonight at 11 o'clock. I hope you'll bring Esme along. I shan't repeat the offer. Um, she'll be well looked after. Oh, of course. Everything you could wish for her yourself. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. So I'm to go then? Well, you liked the gentleman, didn't you, Esme? Oh, yes. He was a fine man. 
Didn't clock you one, did he? Oh, no, Dolly, no. He was very kind to me. Nobody else there? No, just him. <laughs> well, I'm sure, eh? I'd have given me our teeth to meet a gentleman of such elegance and position. You found your feet. Yes. Dolly's put you on your feet. It's up to you now. Dolly, I don't know whether... Now, I... come on, no tears. Life's hard. You do what you can. Now, Everington will put you in the way of lots of fine gentlemen, more than I ever can. Now, give Dolly a kiss. Let's be off. Mm -hmm. There. Yes, Dolly. If ever you need me, not that you will, you know where I am. Miss Donovan? Dolly? She's here. Come on, lamb. Uh, this is Esme, Miss Donahoe. Hello, Esme. I shall be looking after you. If you would get in beside me. Bye, Dolly. Thank you for everything. Esme, pet. <laughs> Remember what I said? For you, Mrs. Jenks. Thank you. Drive on, Albert. One hundred and twenty-five guineas. Oh, Pip. Oh, trousers. Mm -hmm. oh, Pip. Where's me? Oh, Pip. Hmm. What time is it? Uh, it's ten o'clock. What are you doing? Um. I'm getting dressed. Why don't we stay till morning? Oh, I'd, I'd better get back to the Dieppe before they close. What for? You know. I don't know. Well, I... I'd like you to stay. Well, it's, it's people and... I want you to. People? Who cares? They know about us anyway. And Lucy. She's used to you now. She thinks I only visit the parlour. Then I'll let her know that you don't. And there's Alfred, my boy. You haven't even met him yet. So? I know the father. <laughs> How did it go, Susanna? If you need some fun, you're good-looking and kind enough for me. But that's all. I know what I said. Well, then. I'm asking you to stay the night, Pip. Not move in with me. Oh. Yes. Oh. Shoes. Uh, I can't find them. By the door. Oh, yes. I also mentioned comfort. I know. I know what we said. And it's comfort for me to wake up in the morning, to face the day with someone beside me. Being here with you is good. It's more than that. Well, then. Maybe I'm frightened I'll spoil it. Things change. They have with me. You've got to be brave, Pip. Oh, I am. So am I. What are those? Oh, they're some letters I brought from Dolly Jenks. She found Catherine's letters to Michael Tovey. I said I'd give them to her. Oh. Pip. Is it still Catherine you hanker for? No. Are you sure? Yes, 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 yes I'm, I'm sure. Then what are you afraid of? Being hurt. Hurting you, Lucy and Alfred. I'm just not ready, Susanna. So, when shall I see you again? You know, Pip, we're very fortunate to have come this far. I'm Nellie Shuckle, and I shall be a very mother to you while you're here in my care. Thank you, Nellie. Mrs Shuckle, dear. Mrs Shuckle. The first thing we have to do is get rid of those dreadful clothes. So off with them. Well, they belong to Dolly. Oh, well, it's a good thing Mr Etherington could see the beauty beyond when he met you. From now on, everything will be of the finest, hand-picked by him or myself. But I... No, no, don't fret. Everything will be returned to you when you leave. Come on, take them off. Yes, Mrs Shuckle. Oh, you'll get used to me. What's your full name? Esme Donahoe. Oh, foreign, eh? Well, you're Rose now. We've only had one Rose before, and she was something to live up to. Now, you must never tell anyone your real name. And if I hear anybody say the word Esme after now, I shall want to know how and why. 
Yeah, you are then, Rose. Put this on. This is what you call your déshabillé. Most of your clothes here are what they call your déshabillé. That's French for something to wear while you're hanging about, not quite dressed. <laughs> and that's how you'll dress all the time you're here. That way we know you can't go sneaking out. Yes, to be sure, Mrs Shuckle. Oh, and it's very becoming. You'll have no need for overcoats and cardigans. You'll be driven to the Mayfair Salon every day by Albert. He who brought you here. And you'll change there for your clients. You'll be surprised, Rose. Some men will ask you to put things on you couldn't wear in a covered carriage, let alone cross the street in. Ah, this will be your room, dear. And this is Alice. Oh, not her real name, of course. Given, just like yours. Alice, this is Rose. Hello, Rose. I'm happy to meet you. Oh, it's hardly worthwhile getting to know each other. Alice is moving on to better things tomorrow night, aren't you, Alice? Yes, Mrs Shuckle. And you'll have all this to yourself. I see. No clients for you tonight, but go with Alice and she'll introduce you to the salon. This is where the men come to pick us out. It's like Smithfield Market on a Saturday morning in here. All poking and prodding and feeling your bum. Party nights is best, when someone eyes all of us. And where do we take the men? Do we have our own rooms here? Nah. All the rooms is upstairs. All different. Oh, uh, someone's coming. Mustn't talk together when clients are present. Oh, what do I do? Just, um, dangle yourself over a settee. Hello, Sarah. Oh. Can I come in? <laughs> Hello, Pip. Here, sit down. No, it's all right. I won't stop. It's just that I found these at Dolly Jenks and I, uh, I wanted to give them to Catherine. <sighs> what on earth could that woman have that would interest Catherine? These are the letters that Catherine wrote to Michael Tovey. Dolly found them in the room where he kept his things. Would you see she gets them? She'll be through in a minute. Um, I'd rather leave them with you, please. I understand. All right, Pip. You're still fond of her, aren't you? Too fond for comfort, eh? Night, Sarah. so different, Alice. Without me finery. <laughs> this is what I came here in. Thought I was the cat's whiskers in this. Scruffy little tart, eh? <laughs> yeah. How did you come here, Alice? Not supposed to say. And don't want to be reminded. Be quite rich now for me. There is rich pickings to be had here, Rose. Nelly saved all my money for me. And I'll be free to go out at the new place. And where will you be going? Where is it? Hampstead, I think. North, anyway. Nat doesn't let us know where the other kitten houses are, so that if we're ever caught by the police, we can only squeal on this one. The carriage is ready, Alice. Are you? Yes, thanks, Mrs Shuckle. Albert's loaded everything up for you. <gasps> Never have I seen so many boxes <gasps> and packages. Mr Everington was very generous. Oh, I should say. <laughs> I shall miss the girls. And you, Nelly. Oh, they all say that, Alice. But then once they've flown the nest, we never hear another word from them. That's how happy they are. I'll go on down. Tell Nat you're on your way. Bye, Alice. Won't be too bad for you, Rose. You'll soon get used to it. It's better than tramping the streets, anyway. Ta-ra! It was raining like this on the night you found me, Nelly. Over six months ago. Harder, if I recall. Yes, your purse. <sighs> You'll find everything in there as agreed. Thank you, Nelly. Thank me. We'll give thanks for this kind of life. Come on, Alice. Goodbye, Belle. Why are we stopping? Albert? Sir? Where are we? Regent's Park. Sorry, Mr Edrington, sir. I have to get out for a moment. Something wrong with the wheel. <laughs> Damnation, man. It's your job, but dear. We'll get a cab. But my cases. Albert will bring them along later. Uh, what are you doing? Just helping you on your way, Belle. No! No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, where is she? Over here, Thomas. Uh, excuse me. Sir. Sir. Looks like whoever it was strangled her. Then finished the job off with a cut-throat razor. Mm. Any identification? Nothing at all. 
no belongings. But I've seen her before. Swear I have. Is there nothing in her purse? Yes. Strange, though. Felt like it was packed with wads of money. But it's just paper. Wads of paper. Hmm. The dress is green silk. Green silk? Well groomed. Not your street tart, then. <laughs> Hardly Jacob's Island, eh? Wait. Yes. That's exactly what she is. Jacob's Island. Folly Ditch. That's where I saw her. Let's get her to the morgue. I know who can identify her. She was wearing the green silk the day she disappeared. You remember that, don't you? I don't remember. Please, Dolly. It was hanging over a chair the first day I met you. My God. You didn't miss much, did you? You said later she'd ran off with it. Did I? She left Ethel lying there and scarpered. But the dress, Dolly. How can I tell till I see it? Don't remember every dress I was out, do I? Nothing coming back? Maybe, maybe it will. I ate all this pet. If I've got to see her, let me see her now. That's Belle. And I remember the dress. French. I remarked on how well it'd go with your Catherine's hair. She's not my Catherine, Dolly. This little madam run off with it. The barefaced, thieving minx. She can keep it. Meet her maker in it. Let him see what she got up to. On the day she disappeared, Dolly, who was a customer you set her up with? I didn't. It was pot luck. Ethel took her to Shepherd's Market. I'll give her the money to pay for a room in Paddy's Goose so this one could get changed. Wait, it's, it's got to be here somewhere. Who was in charge of the case? We Webstone. Oh, very methodical. Well, here we are. Uh, 13th, 14th. Samoria. Uh, barmaid. Uh, landlord of Paddy's Goose. Potman. Yes, I, th I, th I think this is it. Uh, listen, on the, on, the, on the 14th, we interviewed the potman at Paddy's Goose. I, I'm, I'm right. He says, but, uh, but, but, blum, blum. At the nine o'clock, that's, that's just after Ethel was murdered, uh, a young woman in a g green silk gown came into the bar. She was shaking and frightened and had two g gins. I, I thought she was the kind of girl looking for a gentleman's employ. Uh, she, she struck up an acquaintance with a gentleman who calmed her down and bought her more drinks. Doesn't say who he is. Now, hold, hold on, hold on. Uh, at, at midnight, when Paddy's Goose closed, I saw a carriage draw up outside the tea house, three doors down. The woman in the green silk dress was lying in the doorway, swacked. I asked her if she was all right. Um, a middle-aged woman who I had previously seen with Nat Etherington approached the lady and said she would ha handle the situation, so I went my way. The rain was so hard, I sheltered in, in a... A uh, doorway, and looking back, saw the woman, B Belle, being helped into the carriage. Nat who? Nat Everington? What do you want him for? We think he was with Belle on the night Ethel died. No. Well, means nothing, though, does it? I mean, Belle? Why would he want Belle? Is that short for you? No, thank you, Dolly. Besides, six months ago or, or more. How do you know he didn't kitten her? How do you know he did? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Where do we find him, Dolly? Oh, how should I know? Which is the best salon? Mayfair. But they won't let you in. You've got to be high-ups. High-up as you can get. Judges, lords, all that sort of thing. The nearest you'll get to him is the beggar in the bush. It's where he drinks. Don't have the right twang. Tom does. Do you know any of the girls? No. <laughs> Any girls of that class, I'd hang on to them, not give them to him. Oh, God. What's the matter? Haven't told me everything, have you? You really believe he might have done that to Bill, do you? Maybe. Well, all right. There is something I've got to tell you. It's about his me. Can I have a word with you, Sarah? Yes, what is it, dear? It's about Michael. Tovey? Yes. And the letters Pip brought me from Dolly Jenks. Letters I wrote to him. Oh. Love letters, eh? Yes, but... Uh, what on earth's the medicine? It's all right. I've only just been able to bring myself to read them. There's one from him to me that he must have meant to send me, but... 
for some reason never did. He tells me not to come down from Whitby and that he wouldn't be here. But there is an address where I can contact him. No. Do you think I should go? Or not, Sarah? Well, he, he, he might not be there now. I know. Do you still love him? I think so. But maybe I'm just used to feeling that way. There's nobody else you care about? Pip, you mean. I care about Pip, Sarah. He's my greatest friend. But I don't love him. I'll go with you. Nellie tells me that Mrs Jenks recommended your membership, Mr Tedman. Yes, indeed. I, f I, I find Dolly, um, uh, Mrs Jenks, a very useful and, and reliable source of p p pleasure. So, which one of our young ladies is for you? Uh, I, I'm rather p p partial to red-haired p popsies. Ah, well, there's Rose. She's new. It's only her third day with us. Oh. Rose? Good evening to you, sir. Uh, uh, good, good, good evening. The Arabian room, Rose? Certainly, Mr. Etherington. Will you come this way, sir? The Arabian is quite my favourite in the whole salon. Surely I didn't expect to have such a handsome young man as my Sheikh of Arabia. Really? Indeed not. Well, that's very nice of you to, to, to say so. Would you step into my tent, sir? I, I, um... Come, give me your hand, so... Uh, no, no, no. Mm. Please, 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 please. What? Why, sir, I... Esme. How do you I... know my name? You'll spoil everything. I, I can't see there's anything to, to spoil, only to, to, to help. Who are you? What are you? I, I, I'm a friend of Dolly's, Esme. Rose! I... Rose, my name is Rose. You'll ruin everything. Rose. D did you meet a woman here called... Called Bell. No, don't talk. I don't want to answer. It's, it's very important. Did you meet a woman called Bell? Please don't talk. Leave me. Please go. I pay paid my money. Now, he he'll think you didn't please me. Do you want that? No. Please say nothing. I, I won't. Not to Nelly. No, no, not to, not to anyone. You promise? I promise. I promise. W w why are you doing this? Well, why not? Tis the only way I've got of making something of myself. You, you call this making something of yourself? Well, why do you say that? Because it's true. I've got three brothers and a sister back home in Cork, all younger than me, and me dar all alone trying to look after them. I'm doing the best I can with what I've got to get money to send home. At least here, I know I shan't be murdered in my bed. It's better than walking the streets and it won't be forever. Rose, we, we, we must know if a, if a woman called Belle lived here recently. <laughs> I wouldn't know. We all have different names, just as mine is Rose. The only person I've talked to is, is a woman whose room I took over. She left three days ago. I called her Alice. She, she, she left three days ago? Did, do you know why? Mm, it was some sort of reward. She was moved to another house. Now, no more questions. I've said too much. No, just, just one thing. What was she wearing when she left? A green dress, made of silk. Thank you. Tilly, take the gentleman to the Tudor room. Yes, Mrs Shackle. It's why, sir. Thank you, my dear. Oh, and I see the Arabian is now free. Was everything satisfactory for you, Mr Tedman? Uh, well, why, yeah, yes, yes, thank you. Esme was for very much to my liking. Um, well, uh, goodbye. He called her Esme. Keep her off duty for the next few days and get a message to Dolly Jenks that I'd like to see her about more work. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy? Yes, Uncle Pip? What would you say if I asked your mum if I could come and live with you? Oh, yes, please. Will you? Well, if she wants me to. <gasps> I'll have to ask her first. Why don't you ask her now? When she comes in, you go and wash your hands, eh? All right. No listening, mind. <gasps> Promise. <laughs> Very quiet in there. It's because we're both dying of hunger. <laughs> Shh, Lucy. Have you washed your hands and face? Going now, Mum. Well, hurry up. Yeah.
Will you leave that for a minute? What? The meal. Will you leave it for a minute? What have you been saying to us? <laughs> Nothing. I want to talk to you. What's the matter? Nothing. Just please sit down. But Pip, I... Please. Well, hurry up. Cat got your tongue. <clears throat> Susanna, I can't ask you to marry me b b because you're married already. Not that I'll ever see him uh, again. I, I know. So? So, I want to ask you... What are you doing? On bended knee... Oh, Pip. If I may give my notice to Mrs Vermelo at the Hotel Dieppe. Now, why would you want to do that? Because I want to live here with you and Lucy. To have and to hold. And everything else that says I love you. Oh, Pip. <laughs> Come here. Mm. Uh, Dolly Jenks has been invited to one of Nat Etherington's kitten houses. Uh, wants her to do more work for him. I, I told her to warn Esme if, if, if she's asked to move to another house, not to, to, to go. So now, we wait to see what she can find out before we plan our next move. Hmm. You're uh, qu quiet today? Yes. Wondering what I've done, that's all. And what have you done? I'm moving out of the Dieppe and into Susanna's. Well, c congratulations. Yes. Have you told Catherine? I couldn't. She's gone with Sarah Vermelo to see Michael Tovey. She found an address for him. Sarah told me yesterday afternoon. She says Catherine's very excited. But that, that's, that's not why you've decided to move in with Susanna? Oh, no. Not at all. I has to say as how privileged I feel to be invited to one of your houses. Well, I'm very grateful to you, Dolly. So grateful. I'm going to put a bit of employ your way. Oh, I'm much obliged, I'm sure. Mm, now, mm, I'm putting Nellie Shuckle, who looks after my girls here, into another salon. Something special's cropped up and, well, I'd like you to replace her here for a month. Oh. Is that possible? Uh, for a consideration, of course. She'll stay with you for a few days to explain the position. That would be most agreeable. The thing is, well, the matter's very urgent, and I would like you to start straight away. Now? Exactly. You'll stay here. We have everything you'll need. Oh, but... It I'm... has to be straight away. Nellie will go with you and fetch any clothes you may need. Thank you. Albert will drive you. Straight there and straight back. We must be there. There's no sign of house. Driver? You'll have to walk from here. Can't go no further. Too rough. Michael Tovey lives in a small cottage on the edge of the estate. Just through that copse. Thank you. Now, be brave. Yes. I'll wait here for you. Catherine? Is it you? It is. So then, Michael. Catherine? My God, I surely never thought to see you again. But happy to. Oh, I. I would have been, once. But, but I'd expected to see you a long time ago. Long given up. I thought you didn't care. Oh, I never got your letter until last week. The one with your address. Mr Vermelo was to post it for me. I see. That's Robert, eh? It was taken with the rest of your belongings to Folly Ditch when you disappeared. Folly Ditch? Uh, no matter. Oh, Catherine. So, this is where you're staying? Yeah. Is it with friends? No, uh, it's the house of myself and the lady I'm engaged to marry. I see. The mother of my child-to-be. Oh. Look, uh, don't say anything, Catherine. Please, don't say a word. 
Jenny will be home soon. I, I can't ask you to come in. No, I understand. Mrs. Vermelo is waiting with the carriage just through the trees. I'll take you there. We'll, we'll go along the beach. A little more time, eh? Not Whitby, is it? Not by a long chalk. No. That seems a lifetime ago. I've never stopped loving you. I thought you had. No. Is there uh, anyone else in your life? Someone to make you happy? I think so. I wish you all the happiness, Catherine. Will you hold me? Just once? Hold you? No time for holding. It's too late. Excuse me for bothering you, Mr. Etherington, but I'd like to see Rose, is it, if I may? Which is her room? Uh, she's not here, Dolly. She's moving tonight. We're transferring her to another house, closer to our best salon. I see. Oh, Pip. Just wanted to see you before I go, Sarah. Say thank you for everything. Well, I dare say we'll not be seeing much less of you than before. Is Catherine about? She's in her room, Pip. But there's something I want to tell you. About Michael? Yes. Did she see him? Yes. Michael's getting married. But not to Catherine. Another young lady. Oh. I'm sorry, Pip. I don't think you should see her just now, do you? No. So... Thanks, Sarah. Nat. What is it, Nellie? It's Dolly. What about her? She wants to go to a street stationer. She can't write. Well, you write it for her. She says it's private. Does she? And I wonder how private. Let her go. You and Albert follow her. Don't touch her. Yet. Just see that Albert gets the letter from the stationer. I'll send her now. That's all I'm going to say, Pip, is to go with all haste to a Mr Pip Shepherd, Seven Dials, the Hotel Dieppe. Right. She's done. I'll go back with her. You'll get the letter. All right. Off you go. I'll see to him. Who on earth? I'll get it. Hey! Pip, come quickly. I've got a carriage. I'll explain on the way. What's going on? Where are we going? To the kitten house. I went to see that Dolly was all right. See what happened at the meeting, but... There was nobody at F Folly Ditch. I, I, I was there most of the morning. What? Oh, while I was there, Dolly turned up in, in, in Etherington's carriage with, with another woman. I, I kept out of the way and, and watched as she packed her clothes. Then I, I, I f f followed them back to what must be the kitten house. Did you put a watch on both places? Yes, yes. I but told them not to interfere with whatever they saw happening, just to keep us informed. Then, uh, middle of the afternoon, Dolly c came out and went to a street stationer. When she'd left, the, the, the carriage driver grabbed the letter from the stationer and, and made off with it. The watch spoke to the stationer, who, who re remembered most of the message. Here it is. Tonight? They're moving Esme tonight. Let's hope we can get there in t t time. So, you see, Dolly, we're going to let you go with Rose. You're Esme. We know how fond you are of her. You haven't unpacked yet, so we can just put everything back in the carriage. I see. Let's go, then, shall we? It's going to be with us like it was with poor Belle, isn't it? Why don't you just do it here? We can't let the girls suspect there are no better houses, Dolly. And don't expect any help from your Mr Shepherd, hmm? eh? Where's oh, Albert? He's loading up the carriage. I want Ned and Sam to join us, just in case. Albert, uh. there'll be ten minutes or so. Done now. All right, Tom. I'll nobble Albert. You get the peelers. 
Regent's Park. Catch him in the act. <laughs> Shh. All right, darling. I'm here. Shh. Well, where are we? Albert? There must be something wrong with the carriage. I'm sorry, ladies. I must ask you to get out. Albert? Have the ladies out. There is no Albert, Matt. <gasps> Just me and a few peelers. Tom! Never have I needed something short as much as I do now. My heart is dead. Near as makes no difference. Are you all right, Esme? As well as I can be with my hopes lying in ruins. Well, I'm afraid your hopes were vain hopes, Esme. You'd have ended up as belded. They had fine gentlemen lined up for me. Mayfair was all I dreamed of. Uh, you, you, you never met the men who really bought you, Esme. The ones who bought Bell. They had to know they could, could trust you first. Men so influential... They couldn't afford to let the girls go free once they tired of them, in case they spilt the beans. Men in public office, lords even, whose careers and, and their lives would be ruined. Belle was killed because they were bored with her. They dressed her in the clothes they found her in, so no peeler would associate her with Mayfair society. A dead street girl in an old green dress, still covered with the grime of six months ago. Uh, yeah, I'll not have that. Best silk, that dress. French. Cost me a blooming guinea. Don't suppose we'll ever find out how many more there have been. Well, maybe not, but we'll close them down. So what happens now? We all go home, Dolly. You and Esme to Folly Ditch. Me to Susanna. And me t to... Uh... Mr Hatfield. Thomas. There's, there's something I have to say. Yes. I have been waiting for a very long time. It's about Florence and myself. You see, I... Th that is, I... In The Kittenhauser by John Peacock, Pip Shepherd was played by Todd Carty and Thomas Tedman by Charles Simpson. Stephen Critchlow was Nat Etherington, Maggie McCarthy, Dolly Jenks. Deborah Berlin, Catherine Hockley, Becky Hindley, Susanna Cook, Harry Myers, Michael Tovey, Tessa Worsley, Nellie Shuckle, Elizabeth Conboy, Florence Hatfield, and Ewan Meredith, Albert. Other parts were played by members of the cast. London Particulars was directed by David Blount. <laughs>